However, my mom still believed that I was going to come down, so I had to break the news to her that this is not what was going to happen. I'd already been seeing a therapist, and, and at this point in time, I had realized that she had BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder. For those of you who don't know what Borderline Personality Disorder, it is a serious mental illness that's characterized by pervasive instability in moods, interpersonal relationships, self-image, and behavior. The instability often disrupts family, work life, long-term planning, and the individual's sense of self-identity. Um, just a random trivial fact, it was originally thought to be um, the borderline of psychosis, but people with BPT usually suffer a disorder of emotional regulation. Um, it is much, um, it's less known than schizophrenia, bipolar, manic depressive disorder, um, but it is more common than those, usually found in women. It's an absolutely horrible mental illness to deal with. Uh, people who have BPD often don't realize what they're doing is anything out of the ordinary. They have no clue the amount of pain and consternation that they inflict upon others. Um, they often have a fear of abandonment. So, with my journey embarking to force my mother out of my life because there was no way to have a healthy relationship with her and I was not going to allow her to drag me down with her, um, this would play a key role. As I mentioned before, it's been almost a year since I set the events in motion to say that there's no way that we can have a relationship together in the future, and it still hasn't ended. I decided, since the event started with my mom, that really made me consider the idea of discontinuing any relationship with her, to keep a record of all these events, print out all correspondence and emails, save all letters, and telephone messages re and record them. So I have fairly accurate documentation of what's gone on. Um, I'm in the middle of contemplating if I should go into detail on my personal experience. Um, if there's any interest in it, I, I would put more consideration towards it. But I really want to use this to help other people who are dealing with borderlines or in a similar situation not only teenagers, um, uh, people younger or older, because it's, it's, it's tough to deal with. Not only for them, but for the people they affect, especially if it's a loved one or someone who's really close to you, because not only, not only does it hurt you, it hurts you because you feel that you're at fault. They make you feel that you're at fault, that it's your trouble, your problem, and that if you don't live up to their exact expectations and specifications, that you're not good enough. And that's not true. Don't ever think that. Don't ever let them pull down your self-esteem or your sense of self-worth. That's what happened to me for many years. That's why I had so many false starts trying to start something like this, because I would record videos or audio, and I would listen to it, as I was edi editing it, and it wasn't that I hated myself, it was that I thought that there was no purpose for this. That it was completely and totally worthless. That what I had to say didn't really mean anything, and um, no one was going to listen, no one was going to care, and there's no way that this was going to help. So it was a waste of time in the, in the beginning. And it's finally been now that I've realized and become secure with who I am enough to do this, to start this, to start talking to other people about it, to, to share what has happened with me to try and minimize the pain of others over a wide accessible venue of online video. Again, another giant warp type jump um, to what was going on here. As things became worse with my mother, I became closer to my, my family here, at least my father a bit. Um, for the first time ever, he was able to start talking a little bit about what happened before the divorce. Uh, he never really wanted to partake in that before. Um, and things were seeming like they were improving, like they, like they were getting better. And although it was merely baby steps, small, small, small steps, 
I'd take any success that I could get because it was far more than anything I had had in the past. Things were improving rather than going the opposite direction. Heck, when they stopped. When they stopped and leveled out, I thought things were great. Um, so I used that in conjunction with what was going on to deal with the situation. As I told you, um, when I decided that I wasn't going to spend the summer with my mother, that was during just before AP exams. So I had to deal with drafting and writing a letter. And I'd never actually stood up to my mother before. I'd never put my foot down. And um, I, the person I had been with her was this non-assertive, go-with-the-flow type person. So it took a lot of energy and a lot of strength to sit there and write that out, print it out, and then mail it. Um, and knowing every day, coming home, waiting for the phone to ring for for that call that would be confronting it, where I would have to put my foot down with her and and deal with the horrible, mean, hurting things that she would say to me was absolutely horrible. Um, sitting there and waiting sometimes, even though I was doing other things, the minutes seemed like hours. And um, suffice it to say, after I did stand up to her for the first time, I felt like I could do anything. And every time I would go to stand up to her there again, I would experience a great rush of adrenaline. And my hands would shake and, and everything. It was probably one of the most frightening experiences that I went through. Because although there's nothing that she really could do, okay, she's over the phone, she's a thousand miles away. It's not like she's going to show up at my doorstep, you know. And, um, you know, physically abuse me or anything. It was the, the, the emotional abuse because it always had been there and it always had been a problem. But now it was opening the proverbial floodgate, so to speak. Some might argue that it had already been open, but at least I was going in and addressing it, knowing that it was going to be there, not trying to ignore it or hope that things would get better because they weren't going to get better. They were only going to get it worse from here on out until a certain point which they would begin to get better again. And so these conversations over the phone or correspondences drained me. They took every ounce of energy that I had. And looking back on it, I wouldn't do it any differently. If anything, I would have done this earlier rather than later.